I will start, first of all, to thank you, Professor Slade, for coming all the way from Canada to the OECD headquarters in Paris uh, to participate in this discussion on vertical mergers in the TMT sector. And uh, I will start just with a very broad question that I understand will be hard to answer, but just generally, what do you say from your experience uh, um, serving the literature, the, the empirical literature and conducting many of these empirical studies yourself? Would you say that vertical mergers, are they good or bad, generally? <laughs> Well, I would say that not just vertical mergers, but mergers in general, very few of them, compared to the thousands that go on, raise competitive concerns. That's even more so vertical. So Vertical pose more competitive concerns? No, very few. Very few. Few pose competitive concerns. And that's even emphasized even more so because there are inherent efficiencies that don't always occur with... Uh, horizontal, but there are some efficiencies that... So the empirical evidence uh, shows if, clear efficiencies uh, well, in vertical Well, the mergers. empirical evidence is consistent with efficiencies. Um, a lot of the times they're looking at some outcome rather than some what happened. I mean, foreclosure has to do with disadvantaging rivals, say. And what they look at is often did the firm favor its own integrated products after a merger? And my feeling is you would be sort of surprised if it didn't. So I'm happy that you mentioned foreclosure because this is a, a, a little bit my interpretation uh, from your work, but uh, the way I, I see it is that many studies uh, that you serve with uh, showed some evidence of foreclosure, which is bad, but when these studies compare the foreclosure with efficiency effects, generally they tend to find that consumers benefit from these vertical measures. Yeah. Is this true? I would say it's true. On the other hand, a lot of the evidence is rather old and a lot of it's very reduced form. And I would say that, um, so one of the most reliable papers is a paper by Greg Crawford and several of his co-authors. And um, it's quite structural and they have a, a model of both industries and bargaining and so forth. And what they show there is that it depends. That you can get, and in general you probably are more often get efficiency, but you can get competitive harm dominating. And <laughs> the result can be higher prices for consumers in certain cases. Oh, that's what they mean. That's what they mean when they talk about welfare. It's higher prices for consumers. And, uh, They're not looking at the, the effect on and do competitors. They, do they give, or any other uh, literature gives any help uh, in terms of identifying the circumstances? Oh, yeah. I mean, they do. They show, for example, as I mentioned, um, it, has, it depends a lot on the regulatory regime, but it also would depend on some of the parameter values. So let's say regulatory regime, if there is heavy regulation, is a vertical measure more likely to result in consumer harm or less likely? Well, in this case, this, I, it isn't a general principle, but in this case, the regulation helps. That is, you're less likely to have inefficiency dominate when the regulation is in place. That isn't necessarily, I mean, this has to do with a particular cable industry. And so... It's not something that you could say regulation always is beneficial. <laughs> or bad for. I mean, it's, it's very much of a case study. Um, and, well, in light of, the, of this evidence, um, what is uh, the best uh, in terms of collecting the evidence, of using evidence in uh, practical uh, enforcement cases? Should authorities rely on this evidence well, or should they... I think there are two cases. One is... What are the stylized facts? What, what do, we want a body of literature that looks at a, lot, a whole lot of different industries and tries to figure out what are the effects of vertical integration. But this is not something that you, I mean, this is ex post. Mm -hmm. These firms are either integrated or they're separated. You look at a merger and you see what happened before and after. But you have data that you can use. The other is to forecast, and that's a much harder job. You want to be able to take uh, pre-merger data and say what will happen post-merger. Oh, but that's not always easy to do with the methods that are available nowadays, right? Well, I say it's much harder than, than just looking at what did happen. Well, let me just ask you a final question. Uh, 
following from, uh, from all of your research. Um, when you looked uh, at the efficiencies of mm -hmm. vertical mergers, um, you said at some point that uh, the elimination of double marginalization is not really an efficiency. Well, I think that's, it. somebody else said, a semantic. What I mean is an efficiency in one sense is something where that allows you to produce more with the same inputs or produce the same with less. So this is, you know, you're lowering your costs and so forth. So it's There's not a production to do. efficiency. No, it's a pricing externality. And it's exactly like what happens in a merger of horizontal, a horizontal merger, except the sign is different. Well, the reason I'm asking this question is because um, authorities do not always uh, have uh, to consider efficiencies of merge by themselves, except if the parties claim those efficiencies. And even if they claim, the burden of proof is on the parties. So even though this is a question of semantics, it can have implications for the work of I authorities. I agree, and I, I think that you probably, it is different in the sense that it's something that the parties are, shouldn't, I think, be responsible for. So, I, I'm not sure about this, but I, it does seem like that what you want to do is look at, I think perhaps the agencies are better equipped to think about what happens to prices when different things change, you know, when circumstances change than the authorities are. They're much more apt to low things like what plants would we shut down, what, you know, how would we distribute things differently if we have this many more plants, you know, we minimize transport costs and things like that. Whereas the pricing externalities, I think it's very much of an economist's idea and it's probably better suited to be handled by the economists. Well, so in the same way that in horizontal mergers, yeah. authorities look, look at horizontal at externalities, uh, which are usually bad because they result right. in uh, right. higher right. prices exactly and low quality, it, it will be good if they also look systematically at uh, those externalities in vertical mergers, even though those are uh, usually good because they result, tend to result in lower prices, right. even if not always. But my feeling is that, yes, this is something that the authorities should probably look at. It isn't the big picture often that this is, I mean, it's something that, that may happen and it doesn't always happen. As I said, you, there's no evidence that people really do charge internally marginal uh, costs. But anyway, I think there are lots of intangibles that could be much more important and quite difficult to... Uh, Such as? Uh, eliminating or mitigating contracting, holding, hold up costs and uh, providing the proper incentives to invest in human and physical capital, risk sharing. Uh, there are just a whole lot of things that people have concentrated on in the organizational literature. And authorities should look at all of those. Yeah, but I mean, it's quite hard. It really is. I, I mean, imagine. these are not the sort of thing. It's much easier to say, tell me what your marginal cost is, and then I'll assume that that's how you're going to price. Although I don't know that business people always understand the marginal cost. They certainly know about average cost. Well, that would be easier than instead of looking at all possible efficiencies and all possible effects yeah, of vertical yeah. mergers. Right. Uh, is there any last message that you'd like to share with us from your work or something <laughs> that you believe it's important? I, yes, I guess so. And I think one doesn't, even though when it, simplicity has its virtues, and I always believe in having the simplest model possible that it also has its costs because the simpler the model is, the, the more off you are in the predictions. And so there's a big trade-off of between having something that's really interesting, easy to, to explain to business people, consumers, judges, and whatever, and having something that's actually going to tell you what's going to happen. So at the end of the day, if it is simple enough, it, we have a greater chance of convincing a court, for example. Right, but uh, we also have a, because everything, if, you know, all of the answers you get are going to depend on the assumptions you make. And so you really have to understand the industry. And this is why it's quite hard to do some screening, because you, you can't understand every industry that you might possibly consider. You just, you don't have the resources to do it. So, uh, I think you have to rely on all the methods that you have, traditional sorts of things, as well as some quantitative techniques. Professor Slade, thank you again so much for coming uh, today no, to I? our roundtable. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs>